Hello there. Welcome to the Secrets of Real Estate Investing, the very first episode. I'm Holly McCann, your host, and I'm so excited to be here with you and share with you some of my knowledge and experiences from real estate investing over the last seven years. Real estate investing has completely changed my family's life. It has allowed my husband to quit his corporate job and for me not to ever to return to one. It's been really fun and rewarding to have that financial freedom that real estate investing has afforded us. I'm excited to share with you some of my journey and other people's journeys in this genre and we're just excited, all of us, me and my guests are excited to help you achieve your goals of financial freedom. Which leads me to question you, why are you doing this? Why are you interested in real estate investing at all? It really all boils down to freedom. We want financial freedom. We want time freedom, which we get from having the financial resources to not have to work full time or work for someone else. So I'm excited to help you on your journey and your path to freedom and have a lot of fun along the way. So I'm going to share with you on the podcast, not only my own experiences, but the experiences of guests. Sometimes we will have real estate expert guests, and sometimes I'll bring to you people from other paths, maybe personal and business development paths, maybe perhaps experts who are lawyers, who are CPAs, insurance specialists, some of the team members that we need on our team as real estate investors and also some of those who have gone before us and made huge successful wins and they're happy to help us and share with us how we can follow in their footsteps. Some of the topics we'll be covering include house flipping, which is my specialty by far, landlording, investing in apartments, raising capital, investing your own capital, and um, probate, title solutions, 1031 exchanges, how to invest with self-directed IRA funds, yours or someone else's, college education savings accounts. Um, I'm happy, really happy and thankful that we were able to essentially effectively pay for all four of our kids' college educations with flipping houses. We started with one chunk of money, about $30,000, and many flips later have grown it with zero taxes, which you can do if you do it the right way in a custodian account to grow it to over $200,000 and essentially effectively pay for their college. Pretty exciting thing to do. A great opportunity if you have kids or grandkids or relatives that you would like to help pay for their education and do it with investing in tax-free ways as long as you spend the income and the profits on education. So my personal experience is with my husband, and we have flipped over 200 homes in Southern California. We've purchased in various ways and handled lots of construction challenges. Everything from mold, fire damage, flood damage. We bought a house on Laguna Beach that had water marks at three feet high throughout the whole house. The house had been filled with water. We've done room additions. We've done room hmm, should we call it subtractions? <laughs> we had to take rooms down and off the houses in order to satisfy the city and be able to resell the house. So illegal, unpermitted additions that we've had to remove. We have dealt with grow houses and they were not growing tomatoes in them. <laughs> we've dealt with some firehouses that were firehouses because they were first a grow house. And that led to the fire problems with all the electrical constraints or electrical overburdening that grow houses present um, with all the electrical needs. We've even done several ground up construction projects, including the home I'm in here now, my own home in Dana Point. We bought this home three years ago to fix and flip and decided we'd love the location so much that we would keep it for ourselves after we fixed it up. So that's been an interesting and challenging project and it's still not quite done. It's funny, they say the cobbler's children have no shoes while the house slippers house seems to get last priority sometimes too. <laughs> that's okay, we gotta keep our priorities in line and keep our customers happy with their houses. So some of my background is that I have an accounting degree 
and I worked as a CPA full time five years fresh out of school, um, including starting at Ernst and Young fresh out of school. I did taxes primarily, and as some of the smaller firms I had, I got more well rounded, which was great for my later need and use of bookkeeping skills for the different businesses and projects that we've done and own. That's been really helpful. Helps me speak. CPA language to my CPAs because I don't like to do tax returns anymore and I haven't done my own taxes in 10 years and I don't ever want to have to do them again. Not a pleasure for me, especially with how complex and sophisticated some of our stuff has become. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, my husband, his um, career started out as a civil engineer. He has a civil engineering undergraduate degree and worked for various cities, and then he went to work for home builders. So that's kind of how he got started in real estate. He loved it, and he still loves anything with real estate, home building, development, anything like that. And I remember on our very first phone call where I called my husband to ask him out on a date, we even talked about both of us wanting to fix and flip houses many, many years ago. It took a lot of years after that before we actually did anything about it, but it was an interest that lied within both of us right at the beginning. My husband was a really good negotiator too. When we first started dating, it was um, a very quick courtship. He had first um, started saying, well, if you decide that this is the right thing and we eventually end up getting married, how soon would you marry me? And I said, oh, like a year. You know, okay. Well, he took that as like a pretty hard and fast thing and that we had a deal already and he just started working on moving the timing up. It went really fast. But um, we fell in love quickly and we were married 11 weeks after we met because I was starting my master's degree program and he just kept negotiating his way up to a shorter and shorter contract length, if you will. <laughs> it was fun. We've now been married 25 years and we have four kids ages eight, I'm sorry, ages 13 to 21 with eight years spread top to bottom. Two of the kids are in college in Hawaii and Utah and two are at home now. It's very fun. So rewinding a little bit back in my career, I, as I mentioned, I worked full-time five years. I quit working when we had our first baby and I worked tax seasons only for five years. And when the youngest went to kindergarten, I started getting involved with the real estate investing aspects, mostly the bookkeeping, but I had a great time going with my husband to go look at houses when we started flipping houses. Uh, my husband had successfully did, done one piece of land flip for 73 single family homes. On the side, he got uh, this piece of land entitled because he knew how to do that working for home builders. And um, we did it with our own time, energy, and money on the side. And it was a really successful project. It allowed him to quit his job. And at that point, we looked for opportunities to invest um, this money that we had made. One of the things that we went to was a mobile home park investing seminar down in San Diego. And we heard a speaker speaking about how to fix and flip single family homes. And that really appealed to us and we decided to pursue that. We did that. We bought our first house flip in Moreno Valley, California. It went okay. I think maybe we broke even, maybe even lost a little bit of money, but hey, we learned what we were doing. And it was interesting how we over-improved it, put too nice a granite and really nice stainless steel appliances in a blue collar neighborhood that probably didn't call for that. But we were just gonna make it super nice and perfect and beautiful and have no reason for anyone to say no to buying that house. So it sold. Our private money lender made more money than we did on it, but it was great and a great educational experience. We went on to do more and more. Uh, we bought our first 100 houses at Courthouse Steps, primarily in some hotel ballroom auctions. Buying at the Courthouse Steps, or what they call trustee sale, is a high stakes, high risk game. You show up with cash in California with cashier's checks and when you're the winning bidder, you own it. One piece of yellow receipt paper, you own it. And then my husband would take that and go knock on the door and tell whoever's in the house, we just bought this house, how soon can you get out? Sometimes they'd be tenants. 
really sad if it was um, tenants that had just paid a bunch of money to move in and we'd seen this happen before where the people, the house owner knew they were losing their house to auction and they would still lease it, move someone in and take thousands of dollars from them. That would be really sad. So sometimes we would negotiate cash for keys arrangements to get people out. Sometimes we even sold houses to people that were living in the garage. We have all kinds of stories that we can talk about later. But that's how we did our first hundred houses is kind of, you know, wild and crazy, the wild west. You buy it, you own it right then and there, and you hope um, you get insurance on it real fast before um, it can burn down or have anything happen to it, which thankfully we never did have anything like that happen to it. After a few years of that, these big hedge funds moved in with hundreds of millions of dollars and we couldn't compete with them. They needed a really low return on investment. All they needed was to be able to rent the house and make maybe a 5% return, unlike us who was trying to buy things at 50 to 65% of the after repaired value. We had to buy at huge discounts. So my husband turned to me and said, Holly, you like to talk, you like to network, get out there and find us some houses and deals. So I did. I had a lot of fun doing that. I would go and I would network at the Board of Realtors, at Chamber of Commerce, at all different kinds of venues and places, on the soccer field, at the volleyball court for my kids, wherever I was. I was not afraid to talk to people and tell them what I was looking for. Most of our deals we did buy through realtors and my deal with them was, I will buy it with you and I will resell it with you. You're guaranteed two commissions and we'd love to see you double ended again. So maybe three commissions, maybe four commissions. We wanted them to make money and they knew that. They could sense that about us and I'm sure that led to more success on our part. We had two different realtors we did over 10 deals each with. They kept bringing us deal after deal because they knew that we would act in integrity and give them the relist and um, everyone wins and everyone's happy. Some of our personal strategies for financing include buying them with hard money loans, uh, with our cash, with um, an LLC with a partner where we had partner with us form an LLC, put a bunch of money in, us put some money in, and then we did special allocations with that. We did private money with trust deeds where we'd buy something and then if we wanted to pull some cash out, we would offer the opportunity to a friend or family member to have that trust deed and we would put their money in, pull our cash out and go do another deal. So we've done that before. We've done subject to deals where we buy a property subject to the existing mortgage on the house. So a couple of times we've done that where a, maybe a big bank like Chase Bank would have a mortgage on a house, the seller sells it to us, we continue to pay the mortgage throughout the duration of the flip and then that mortgage gets paid off when we resell it. So subject to just means that you are buying it with the mortgage on it. The mortgage is not getting paid off. That's a very um, desirable, effective way to get houses, especially if they have a, a nice low interest rate that would be lower than your hard money costs or lower than a private money cost. I also decided to get my real estate license in 2014 when we had been buying quite a few homes that year with wholesalers. And a wholesaler is just somebody who has found a deal and is selling you the contract to buy it. That's primarily how it works around here in California. Sometimes they'll close on it and then resell it to you. But they don't fix up the house. They find the opportunity. They find the ugly, nasty, problem, stinky, distressed house and they sell it to you. So when I bought them like that, I didn't have a commitment to another realtor and I thought, why not get my real estate license and scoop up that back end commission? And I did exactly that. I also have really enjoyed helping what I call retail buyers buy homes. So I've done a bit of that over the last um, year or so, and I bring so much to the table for them since I know about construction costs. And they say, what would it cost me to change out that kitchen? What if I wanted to do this? Do you think I could knock this wall out? And it's just so fun and rewarding to be able to tell them what the costs probably are and what's a good payoff, what's not, especially for sellers to tell them where I think they'll make their money back and where I think it would not be profitable for them to make improvements to their houses. 
Um, so overall, there's a little bit about my background. I'm so excited to bring you the best experts in so many fields. We are going to be talking about um, everything related to real estate investing and certainly shoot me an email, contact me and tell me if there's a topic or a guest that you'd like me to have on the podcast. But we are going to talk about ways to save money on taxes, um, insurance, how there's special insurance you need if you're flipping a house, uh, liability, what kind of entities to have, 1031 tax deferred exchanges, trustee sale purchasing, and go into more on that about my team and how we did that and how other people do it. Non-performing notes, I have a special speaker I'm going to bring in on that. Property management. I do my own property management on about 10 single family homes and I love it. I'm okay at it now, or maybe I'm pretty good at it, but it certainly was a learning curve for me to get up. So we're going to talk about all kinds of real estate subjects as well as mindset, leadership, entrepreneurship, life balance, professional development, how to be a better you, how to be happier, how to have more success. And um, of course, there's always the other subjects of creating the streams of cash flow and having cash flow properties that a lot of people like to do too. So that's a great way to have your financial freedom is multiple streams of income. And maybe that multiple streams is coming from different types of real estate. Maybe some of it's real estate, some of it's not. Maybe some of it's in-state, out-of-state, out-of-country. There's just so many opportunities for investment, and we are going to talk about a lot of it. Bottom line is I am here on this podcast to inspire you, to let you know that you can do this, to raise your belief in yourself when you hear about the people that are doing it and doing it successfully. I'm just excited to have you think and know that you can do it too. Uh, some people that do this business have little to no education, or maybe they just graduated high school. Your education level in the public system or even private is not indicative of success or failure as a real estate investor or entrepreneur. Some of the best entrepreneurs are school dropouts, so don't think you have to have some big college degree. You don't have to be a CPA like I was or an engineer like my husband. Sure, maybe that helped us a little bit, but people that don't have those things can get up to speed quite quickly with um, pairing up and with a good educator and some good investing in getting out there and seeing some real projects and meeting people doing it. Learn from those who are doing I want to push you to do things that you might not want to do and might be easier for you to be pushed when you know there's other people doing what you want to do. Um, I'd like to leave you with one thought for today. I'd like you to consider what can you do today? What, what action can you take today, right now, or this evening, or whenever you've got a little bit of time that can further your investment goals? Is it go to a library and get some books on real estate investing? Is it listen to some other podcasts on real estate investing? Could it be reach out to a mentor? Um, go to a real estate club. Go to meetup.com and look for real estate investing clubs in your area. Um, is it go online and just search out real estate investing and start looking at what resources are out there for you? Maybe you've done lots of education, now it's time to take action. Could that action be to go knock on a few doors in a neighborhood and ask them, hey, do you know anyone that's um, maybe interested in selling their home in this neighborhood? I really want to buy a home in this neighborhood. You never know what the answer could be. They could say, oh yeah, well I was thinking of moving, or oh, my neighbor Susie across the street, she and her husband, they just got job transfers and they got to move and they got to move fast. There's just so many different things you can do to take action now. And if you're still having a hard time, get yourself an accountability partner and then tell that accountability partner what you're going to do every day. I did this a few months ago. I've got an accountability partner and we text each other in the morning what our MIT most important task is for the day. And then we report back by text at the end of the day whether we did it or not. And sometimes it has to roll over to the next day because other fires come up, other challenges come up. It's really interesting and helpful when you have someone that you know you have to report to. 
We also do a weekly call for about half an hour. We talk about our wins of the week and our challenges, and we give each other advice and ideas on how to get through and push through the challenges, which all entrepreneurs have. Hey, we are entrepreneurs because we get paid to solve problems for profits. That's the definition of an entrepreneur. And if that doesn't sound fun for you, then this probably isn't the right place for you to be. But I'm here to help you find the solutions to those problems to push through and have success. And I'm really excited for you to keep listening and give me feedback. And we're going to have a fun journey along the way, learning the secrets to real estate investing. Hey there, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you like it and click subscribe to get notified of more videos. And you can go to hardhatholly.com for a free download on secrets to finding great deals.